Hello, it's uh, Philip Cargom here. I was all blurred, that's why I was pa pausing, because the thing wasn't in focus, but I hope it's in focus now, and I hope you can hear me. T for a Druid 37. Ah, uh, do, do say you've arrived, you've made it to the clearing in the forest where we're having our meeting, and first in is Mike from Utoxeter. That's fantastic. Mike and Jan, it's lovely to see you. So it's uh, great to uh, to see see you here, Beth from Italy, Floriana from Berlin, Chris from Pensacola. That's that's lovely. I thought uh, a good subject today would be to look at how we can feel sane in a world that seems so insane in so many ways, and. Uh, a while back, it's it's seemed insane for a very long time, actually. And uh, so a while back, I wrote quite a long piece with quite a lot of ideas in it, which I will give a link to in my blog post if, if this whets your appetite and you'd like to uh, have a whole bunch of ideas in your uh, uh, under your belt, I think is the word. Um, but here, you know, in this in this time we've got together, let's let's just look at one. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with a with a poem. But the time is not a strong prison either. A little scraping of the walls of dishonest contractors' concrete through a shower of chips and sand makes freedom. Shake the dust from your hair. This mountain sea coast is real. For it reaches out far into the past and future. It is part of the great and timeless excellence of things. So that's from the poem, A Little Scraping by Robinson Jeffers. And when I hear verse like that, it immediately helps me to collect, connect to the timeless excellence of things, the sort of deeper reality that isn't crazy, that isn't mad. It's as if, or at least my belief is, that reality is fundamentally good and loving and, and wonderful and extraordinary and awesome and incomprehensible. And then somewhere in that vast field, there's an area that's nuts from our perspective and, and we might be living in it. And uh, so it's a kind of what you might call a metaphysical absurdism. It seems absurd in that small small frame, but actually we're contained within a wider context of meaning and purpose. And so the things that ground me when I feel as if the world's gone crazy or there's kind of craziness all around me is poetry, it's nature, it's good friends, and it's also ideas. Ideas can be immensely powerful and helpful, I think. So I thought this evening I'd just share one idea, which is so simple, that, but when I read it a long time ago, probably 20 years ago, uh, it immediately made sense to me and relieved some of the stress I was experiencing by being alive in the, probably then, the 20th century. And it comes from Stephen Covey's book, um, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, which is f classic, really, in, in personal development. And if you only ever read one book on self-development or pop psych, as it's called sometimes, uh, pop psychology, um, <clears throat> although it's a bit unfair to call it that perhaps, but if you only read one book, I would recommend Stephen Covey's Seven Habits book. It's fantastic. And in that book, he presents an idea, which is to say, look, we have a circle of concern. And for many of us, for most of us, perhaps, our circle of, con of concern is vast. We are concerned about the fate of the planet, about global warming, about war, poverty, um, the ecosystems, all sorts of things. Um, but then, he says, you also have a circle of influence. And so if your circle of concern is this big, encompassing uh, all of life, really, um, then it's important to make a distinction between your circle of concern and your circle of influence. 
which will be smaller. And it's when you confuse the two, when you don't make a distinction between the two, that you can experience stress because everything is so insurmountable. The problems are so insurmountable. It's very easy to feel overwhelmed. As soon as you realize that you have a circle of influence, whatever size you draw it, you may draw it as a tiny little circle or as a bigger circle, whatever that circle is, within that, you can have an effect. Immediately when I read that, I was relieved because I suppose at some level I was trying to uh, be of help to the entire world, to every living being on earth. Uh, and when I realized that, that I had a much smaller sphere of influence amongst my family and friends and being a writer amongst the people who read my books and so on, that helped me hugely to make that distinction. Covey then goes deeper and he says that once you realize this, you can adopt a proactive stance instead of feeling overwhelmed by all the stresses of the world around you. You can see your sphere, sense your sphere of influence, and then you can be proactive and realize, okay, within the sphere, I can be helpful. And then you set about being helpful in the best way, the way that, that suits your abilities and temperament. So you become proactive. And what he observes is that when you become proactive, and here's this fascinating thing, when you become proactive, your circle of influence gets bigger. You have more influence. And when you are reactive, when you just react to things that, that, that are coming at you, your circle of influence tends to shrink like that because in the former you feel empowered in the latter you feel disempowered and so this is the thought that I wanted to share with you it's a thought that uh, is depicted in a story um, Patrick Bourgeois he's saying define sane well yes that's a huge huge question. I suppose when I'm talking about saying, I would say the way I'm using it now, insanity is uh, large amounts of people being killed, uh, people making no attempt, uh, well, people not taking global warming seriously, calling it a Chinese hoax or something insane, like that's insane. Um, a lot of what one, we see in the political world is insane. In the UK at the moment, the Brexit fiasco seems to be insane for, to many of us. Um, and just generally the amount of suffering that human beings seem to cause to each other seems pretty nuts uh, to me. So it's that kind of stress and the stress of, um, yes, breakdown and chaos and so on. So I hope that's a good enough definition, Patrick. Um, so, um, so yes. So now I've lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? Insanity, insanity. And, uh, Yes. So, OK, a little story for you before we go into our meditation, which speaks to this idea in a more lyrical way, in a story way, instead of a, uh, a diagrammatic way, in a, um, in a conceptual way. There's an old man. I don't know where it comes from. If you know this story, do and you have a reference. Do tell me where it comes from. I, I don't know where it comes from. An old man walking down to a beach one day. And he sees a young girl, she's about eight, nine years old, and she's standing on the shoreline. And the high tide has brought up a whole load of starfish. And then the tide has gone out, stranding the starfish. And this little girl is picking up one starfish and throwing it into the sea. But there are hundreds and hundreds. And the old guy goes up to her and says, what are you doing? And she says, well, if they stay too long without water, they die. So I'm saving this to the starfishes. I'm, I'm throwing it back in the water. And he replied, well, there are too many of them. You can't possibly save all the starfish. It can't, you can't make a difference. And she shows this one starfish to him and 
throws it into the water and says, well, it certainly made a difference for that starfish. And again, I, you know, I heard that story and I thought, how, how wonderful. You know, we just do what we can in the world. We're helpful and kind to the people around us. We uh, extend our sphere of influence by being proactive in the world. And, and that is all we can do. And that's what we do. And so I hope these ideas are as helpful to you as they, they have been to me. And um, let's, let's have a meditation to actually connect with this idea at a deeper level or at another level, perhaps. And then if you're interested in, 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 in more ideas, do, do have a look at the reference that I give in, in my blog to other ideas. So seated here now in front of your tablet or your computer or mobile phone, just maybe close your eyes to better concentrate on yourself or you, you can watch and maybe do this later. I'll occasionally open my eyes because sometimes the internet connection goes down and I find myself talking to myself. So yes, so if you close your eyes, maybe just become aware of sounds far away. Allow them to be there and then become aware of sounds near at hand. Just allow them to be there and become aware of sounds from within your own body, such as your heartbeat or perhaps your breathing. As you move your attention now to breathing in and breathing out. And you don't have to make any effort because you just find yourself breathing. You might want to take in a deep breath, hold it for a moment and then breathe out. And now you become aware of being seated in the sacred grove, the magical clearing in the forests that Druids use as a place of sanctuary, as a place of communion with the divine. And you become aware of the earth beneath you. And you just allow all the tension just to drift into the earth, drifting down into the earth. As you become aware of the earth with all the life and the energy there, the minerals, the soil, the crystals, the water. And you feel the healing energy of the earth rising up into you. And you sense behind you the way the water is being drawn up the roots of the trees into these beautiful trees that you now become aware of around you. You sense their trunks, the protection and the power and the peace that they bring. And then the branches and the leaves high in the air. And you breathe in the perfume of the trees, the essential oils that the trees exhale through their leaves, which science tells us now goes into our bloodstream. So molecules from the tree are transferred into our bodies through the air, through our lungs and then into our bloodstream. Which is why doctors in Japan and Germany prescribe walking in the forest as a health giving cure. So we breathe in the energy of the trees and we become aware too of the energy of the sky. And we allow the vitalizing dynamic energy of the sky to flow down into us. And we breathe it in and the energy of the sky meets the energy of the earth within the center of our being. And now imagine, if you will, that you very gently open your psychic eyes, your inner eyes within the sacred grove, and just in front of you, 
is a beautiful still pool of water. And as you look into the pool, you see the sky reflected above. You see the blue sky, perhaps a few white clouds reflected in the pool. And you see too the leaves of the trees and the branches reflected in the pool. And you see to one side, there is a little pile of stones, smooth stones. And just reach out with one hand and pick up one of the stones and feel it between your thumb and your fingers. Feel this smooth stone. Touch this stone to your heart, to your chest. Fill it with your love, your love for the world and for all of life. And then gently and consciously and deliberately, just gently toss this stone into the center of the pool. And watch as the ripples of water spread out across the surface of the pool. And you see the stone sinking to the bottom to form part of the bed of this little pool. Now take another stone. Notice its color. Feel it with your fingers. Hold it against your heart. Fill it with whatever intention you wish for peace, for love, for understanding, for health. And then again, just sense yourself throwing that stone into the pool, watching the ripples spreading out the reflection on the water rippling and moving and then gradually becoming still again as you see the pebble drifting down to the bottom. And then do this one more time in your own time. I won't speak. And then having done this, just looking for one more time at the pool, the reflection of the sky and the trees on the surface of the pool, you close your inner eyes and you become aware of yourself seated in the sacred grove, the earth beneath you, the sky above you. the energy of the earth meeting the energy of the sky within the center of your being. And then feeling calm and settled, gradually allow your awareness of the sacred grove to begin to fade with its pool as well, just fading as gradually your awareness of being seated in front of your computer screen or your tablet or your phone, as that becomes stronger. And feeling fully present here and now, you slowly stretch your fingers and toes. And when you feel ready, you open your eyes.
so I hope you enjoyed that. <clears throat> um, Zach is commenting on my very organized bookshelf. You know, one day there was a strange rumbling like a kind of earthquake and the entire bookcase collapsed. Um, it was very dramatic. Uh, it was because I hadn't attached it to the wall. It's a good thing to attach a bookcase to a wall. So when I attached it to the wall, I decided to organize the books as well. So I can see there's some lovely, lovely comments. I'm being drawn magnetically to looking at the comments. So I'm going to make a cup of another cup of tea and come and back and read them. But um, thank you for uh, thank you for being who you are. Thank you for meditating with everybody and with me. It's it's lovely. I I love meditating in a group actually, and and it's lovely to be in this big group. It's just great, and um, so so great. Uh, so look, have a have a fantastic uh, week. And if you're interested in exploring a little more in depth about the circles of influence, uh, although in a way, what I like about it is it's pretty straightforward. It's quite clear as an idea, but you, you can go deeper with it. Um, have a look at the blog, blog, uh, blog post. But otherwise, have a wonderful week. Lots of love and many blessings. Okay, bye. <laughs>